Hey there friends and enemies, Jopi here again and with the most recent patch of the first Descendant, I've seen a common question in the community of whether or not the developers are making the game too easy. And this is a common problem that Looter Shooter and other live service games often have, as balance is very difficult. No one likes to see nerfs to their favorite thing, everyone wants everything buffed, but if you buff things too much, then content is far too easy and ultimately builds will no longer matter and you won't need to farm for anything new so there is a tight wo tight rope to walk in these situations that is difficult to find especially for a developing studio that hasn't done a game like this in the past so the way they handle this will be very very important and they talked about not only with this hotfix but also upcoming changes to season one how we're gonna see things evolve anyway jumping into hotfix 1.0 0.7 they did lower the difficulty mechanics in the hard intercept battle frost walker now this is one of the more difficult void intercept battles in the game and it's still very challenging overall but a lot of players who have reached the end game saw this as a skill check and wanted it to remain as is however the developers felt like some of the mechanics were overly difficult and we're gatekeeping players from getting farther and this is a problem because the key point of the first ascendant at this particular time is unlocking characters and ultimate weapons and so if you're prevented from doing that for too long the likelihood is that you're going to just stop playing the game and oftentimes there are alternative places to farm but it does suck when you are stuck on a particular boss now is that a problem i don't necessarily think so i think having these more aspirational content type of bosses is very important but i do know that the longer the game is around some of the content that is older will feel easier at the end of the day so i'm not surprised that this is a change that is happening i just wonder if it's the way they should handle things going forward especially as once you beat this boss and you proceed on to Molten Fortress, now you're going to see even more issues with some of these mechanics. So, again, how they handle this going forward, how they introduce mechanics in something like a Mega Dungeon will be very, very fascinating. Now, those aren't the only enemies that have been nerfed. The HP of Monsters and Void Fusion Reactors has been reduced, and they will now drop more ammo and recovery orbs when you defeat them now the ammo and recovery orbs i think is a good thing it does feel like it's a bit of a problem if you're unable to melt the bosses and then you don't have any ammo and then you gotta uh when you do the next round of fight then if you try to restart the void fusion reactor you can often find yourself without hp or more likely without ammo so that's just if you have a build that's not really handling those i think they're not that difficult and the lowering of the hp makes them almost a joke at times so that's a bit of an issue but for me i'm unsurprised by this as well because they want to encourage people farming you already have rng that you're fighting against and so now you also have an easier way to obtain this stuff by defeating these bosses that much faster and at the end of the day i think they want people to keep farming the game to keep playing the game unlocking all the descendants they possibly can unlocking all of the ultimate weapons and in order to do so you don't want to discourage players because the things are taking a significant amount of time to farm for one piece that you're looking for because you're having bad rng and so speeding up the process by making the void uh fusion reactors a little bit easier is one way to handle that now i don't necessarily agree this is the way to go but i can understand why they would do this now going into season one they've also mentioned that there will be additional changes and the hope is that for them they buff some of the underperforming weapons and descendants and not necessarily buff them past what we see with the current meta if you would of the descendants the ones that are the most powerful but allow some of these new descendants and some of the descendants that are underperforming to have a role in different content and to do so they're not exactly going to do buffs and nerfs what they're gonna likely lean into is the module system and try to make modules for underperforming descendants that are really strong now the downside to this is obviously 
it limits build crafting. You have to have that module for that descendant to be successful. But they did say they wanted to be careful nerfing your favorite character that you've been running for a long time and nerfing your favorite build unless it's absolutely broken. And so this is a concept that I think makes sense in general, but I do worry about it a little bit because the stronger that our descendants get, the harder it will be to balance some of the content. And I don't want us to get to a point when they introduce the mega dungeon and the other end game activities for it to be a cakewalk because we are so overtuned. And we've seen it in the past with games like Destiny and we they ramped up the difficulty of the most recent raid because everyone was kind of blowing through the day one raid races, which is something the community really looks forward to. But in doing so, that means that the most recent raid in Destiny 2 is one of the least played overall, the least completed. And that's really where the balance comes in. Are you tuning everything for the wider player base or do you have that level of aspirational content that is necessary to keep the high players going? I think the solution to this will be a couple factors. You could have leaderboards with times on how quickly you can defeat some of these void intercept battles or uh, how much damage you can do. Some kind of leaderboards I think would be helpful. You can also have unlockable content like uh, cosmetics or if we end up getting a social space where we can add our own flair, you can add stuff like that and make content that... Uh, if you are able to beat it at the highest level or within certain time frames or whatever the case may be, however they want to handle that, allow there to be exclusive rewards that you can show off and then still make the content uh, as hard or easy as they want to with regards to the wider player base. And I think at the end of the day, that's the, the balance that they have to find. I do think that the community in general is slowing down with this game. I believe everyone will will jump back in once season one does drop but i'll be very curious without any type of uh fun repeatable content maybe we get eventually a horde a true horde mode for uh, escalating difficulty that you can't just bunny farm over and over again or maybe we do get a different type of content that does challenge our players and has mechanics and requires you to use teamwork or if you can do it as a solo player it requires you to have a build that's not just a insta melt boss build or a pure farming build and something in between that's something that i'm hopeful going forward but it'll be very interesting to see how they handle it with season one what happens going forward and whether they continue to nerf and buff things in the same way that they've done so far i'd love to hear from you guys what do you guys think of the changes what do you think about the Frostwalker? have you have you taken it on since the new update and have you try to fight any of these void fusion reactor bosses. Love to hear from you guys. My name is Jopa. Have a good one. I'll catch you all later.